In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the Book of Daniel. We've been going through the Book of Daniel for a couple of weeks now and been trying to dive really deep into the Scripture, which I have really enjoyed being able to go through this narrative with you. And just to get you caught up to speed, what Daniel is doing right now is he has just interpreted for the king what his dream actually means. He's informed him, this is what you're looking at, this is what these different symbols mean, and he tells him that his dream is supposed to predict the future. And when he does this, he has a reaction that I don't think Daniel was expecting and frankly probably didn't want. And we're going to go ahead and go to the scripture in Daniel 2, 46 through 48 to get that story. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and did homage to Daniel and gave orders to present him an offering of a fragrant incense. And the king answered Daniel and said, Surely your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries since you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole providence of Babylon and chief perfect over all the wise men of Babylon. Now you think about this. This is a man who is a pagan king that has been drenched in pagan culture his entire life. And you can tell even by his language that this is who he was. He says it's a god of gods. In other words, he's acknowledging God's power, but he's essentially saying that there are other gods and they still exist too, but your god is superior to them. Which is true because their gods don't exist, but my point in all of this is he doesn't immediately change his entire perception of the world. He doesn't immediately get rid of all of his old ideas and beliefs when this happens because he's not been taught that. Daniel hasn't come and told him that there is only one God. He hasn't instructed him in the laws of Moses or any of that. But here's the thing. He knows something that's effective when he sees it. It's one of those things that even an atheist can quickly understand Christian charity and kindness when they see it take place in someone's life. And so because of that, we can see the amazing effect that God's power through Daniel had on King Nebuchadnezzar. That even he realized, not knowing anything about God other than it was the God that Daniel worshipped, he understood all of these truisms about God just from the act of Daniel interpreting his dream because the power of God changes people. When he saw that, that this God can see the future and he's the one that sent the dream to Nebuchadnezzar and because of that he was able to interpret the dream and to do so through Daniel, he takes a step back and goes, whoa, Who, whichever God you're worshiping, that is a God of gods. He's obviously more powerful than all the gods of the magicians and the Chaldeans and all the gods that I'm worshiping because your God actually got results. Your God actually was able to tell me what my dream meant. See, he was able to very quickly recognize that the Chaldeans and the magicians that had been meeting with him before, they were fakes. They didn't have any real supernatural power. And that's why he got so infuriated is because they told him, well, we can only do it if you, inter you tell the dream to us and then we interpret it. He's like, no, no, no. If you want to prove to me that you really are who you say you are, you have to tell me the dream and you have to interpret it back to me and tell me what it means. Daniel was able to do that, even though Daniel had never heard the dream. And Daniel acknowledges very quickly, he's like, look, this isn't me doing it. There's nothing special about me. I don't have supernatural powers. I'm just getting this information from God. And because of that, Nebuchadnezzar realizes that, understands it, even though he doesn't understand fully or doesn't understand what all that means, he understands the basic message that Daniel has given to him, that this is what my God can do. And because my God sent you the dream in the first place, he's the one that can tell you exactly how this all played out. And I love the verbiage that he uses here. A king of kings, uh, a lord of kings, and a revealer of mysteries. And because of that, you've been able to reveal this mystery. Which is true. God is a bringer of light to that which is unclear, that which is dark. 
And because of that, he's seeing all these other gods, these pagan gods that are shrouded in mystery and you can never see them and you don't really see them interact with human beings. Now he's seeing a real God that actually plays a part in not only the lives of people that know him, but also his own life who didn't know this God that Daniel is speaking of. So this God that is universal across the entire human race that works with everybody. And this is a God that previously Nebuchadnezzar had no idea was even there. So that's why Nebuchadnezzar is so astounded. Now, he also does delve into what could be obviously seen as worship in Daniel. I'm imagining probably rebuked that pretty quickly, considering we know who Daniel was. It doesn't mention specifically that he did that in this particular verse, but I, I tend to imagine that he did just because of the way that he's presented this whole thing as being, this should be given credit to God, not to me. I'm not the one doing this. God's the one that's really in charge, and he's the reason that I'm able to see into the dream that you're talking about. But what I really do believe is astounding about this is because God, this one act by the Lord, had such a profound impact on the life of a pagan king. I think it says how big an impact that we, when we share the gospel with others, can have on their life. That it's like their eyes have been opened and they'll see all these things just click together that make sense. And occasionally when you teach somebody in the Bible and you see that click happen, you see their face light up, you see them finally put those pieces together to where it all makes sense. Well, then something really amazing happens. You can really see the power of God's word and his message and his truth working in their mind and in their soul. This is something that Lewis himself actually talked about. C.S. Lewis said that he believed in God, but for the same reason he believed in the sun. Not only could he see that the sun was risen, but he could see everything else as a result of the sun having risen. And that's really the way that God's truth is supposed to work. That not only do we see God's truth, but every other truth around us starts making more sense because we have that basis of truth in God. And this is what happened in Nebuchadnezzar, that, that small little window of that opened up and all of a sudden he saw, whoa, all this other stuff starts making sense. And so really it just shows the power of God's word and his truth and how it can affect even somebody that doesn't really know him. And that's the kind of effect that we should be seeking to have on the rest of the world. It's also the effect that God's truth ought to have on us. We ought to live in this constant sense of wonder of God's majesty and his power. Stay the course, friends. Hey, if you want all the latest updates to this channel, you need to go ahead and like this video and subscribe using that little notification bell down there. Now, that gets you all the latest updates, political commentary, and any of my Bible classes or studies that I post to this channel. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe that it's because you hate America and hate Jesus but I can't think of any other reason why you wouldn't subscribe.